these are the little things that, that women need to be um, uh, uh, informed about. And so these series of films that you will see today um, are some of the films, and we will go on increase to have films also on child abuse, uh, because there is a concern, and especially in these situations of, of levels of frustration that people have being locked at home, uh, not children not being able to go to school, you have uh, you know, issues of, of violence arising. Uh, recently, in support with the Hukuke Pakistan program, we did um, a small film festival um, talking about very strategic um, areas of human rights. Um, we talked about uh, the death penalty, we talked about uh, women empowerment, we talked about sports and women, and uh, we were able through this film festival to reach 3.1 million viewers. Um, uh, another thing we did was using innovation, because I think um, the idea in Pakistan when we have to address issues of, of deep-rooted issues of women empowerment and abuse, uh, we have to look at very innovative ways of, of sending our message across. So we, um, and this was with the support of um, Sabar Menela, we painted these 20 trucks uh, um, and on that we had messages of child education. Um, as you know, Pakistan, uh, child education, uh, women's education is 49%, um, and the dropout at, at, at matriculation is, 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 uh, goes down to only 13%. So um, we wanted to spread this message, and that was another initiative that we did, was we painted these trucks and we sent them into the furthest areas of Pakistan. So this truck is our Islamabad, Peshawar, Fata, और बहुत दूर दूर दराज इलाकों में गए और इस इन ट्रकों के पीछे हम लोगों ने मैसेजेस डाले थे कि अपनी बेटियां को पढ़ाओ ये जो जल्दी शादियां से आप परहेज की कर परहेज करें और ये जो ट्रक्स थी ये दो शादियां सात मिलियन किलोमीटर्स गई थी पाकिस्तान के पूरी इलाके में और ये दिस मैसेज स्प्रेड टू एन um, the Ministry of Human Rights believes that these interventions are very, very important. And these partnerships are these partnerships are also very important because one government can't do it alone. Civil society is very important and they are very important. And the media, which is very important to us, the media is our message and the message और ये जो आगाही का मुहम चला रहे हैं इसको हम आगे ले जाता है इसमें हमारा बहुत सहारा देते हैं so through uh, the support of all our partners we were able to do, sir, do these very important initiatives uh, the final initiative which I would like to talk to you about is uh, the citizens information portal uh, this was again done with support of the European Union and uh, in the Ministry of Human Rights um, when we came, there was one very important issue that we found missing, uh, data. How do you get accurate, empirical, genuine data? And how can we create a data base, a, a data portal for students, for stakeholders, for everybody to be able to access? And in this, I'd like to really acknowledge the hard work of uh, Mr. Kamran Rajar, who was our ex-joint secretary, uh, whose baby really this project was and to really commend it and, and give him the acknowledgement for the work that he did. Uh, this uh, portal not only identifies domestic legislation, international legislation, but our recommendations that we received from the global, global communities. And this will be able to uh, be a sort of platform for students to understand what is human rights. So, we have done nafis kiye hain humne kaun si international treaties ko ratify kiye hain um iske ilawa ek aur aaj bahut khush khabri hai ki hamari minister sahab yahan baithi hui hain um abhi inhone aur abhi wahi is meeting se aa rahi hain anti rape ordinance has been finalized and um while there there was uh, uh, sections in the ppc on rape there was no one consolidated legislative form to talk about all aspects of rape or in ko mai daat deti hu ki aaj ye jo hum 16 din ki ek activism din ki hum launch kar rahe hain isme ye bahut achhi khush khush khabri hai ki hamare paas ek kanoon hoga ek ordinance hoga jo 
बहुत एक कॉम्प्रिहेंसिव तरीके से रेप की रेप को एड्रेस करेगा रेप का सब्जेक्ट और इसमें इन्होंने एक स्पेशल कोर्ट्स का भी जिक्र किया है कि जो रेप के केसेस हैं वो स्पेशल कोर्ट्स में जाएंगे उनकी एक ख़ास टाइम लाइन होगी बिकॉज आप लोगों को सबको पता है कि पाकिस्तान में रेप की कन्विक्शन तो सिर्फ तीन परसेंट है तो द मिनिस्टर हैज़ बीन वेरी 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 फोर्थ राइट ऑन दिस टू मूव फॉरवर्ड ऑन दिस वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इशू एंड सो दैट्स अ नदर गुड न्यूज दैट वी वुड लाइक फ्रॉम द मिनिस्ट्री टू लेट एवरीबडी नो आई वुड लाइक टू थैंक एवरीबडी आई वुड लाइक टू थैंक ऑल द माई मिनिस्टर फॉर ऑलवेज बैकिंग आस इन ऑल आई इनिशिएटिव माई टीम ओवर हेयर कामरान माई टीम अरशद साहब आई कैन सी मंगी माई न्यू साहब माई न्यू जॉइंट सेक्रेटरी अख्तर साहब के दीज आर दिस इज द टीम दैट अ वेरी स्मॉल टीम of you know now maybe 30 or 40 officers who are mandated to look after the human rights of 220 million people of Pakistan in very many cross cutting uh, cutting areas uh, i'd also like to acknowledge the support of the european union who has been able to give us uh, a great deal of of support in terms of human resources in terms of training in terms of budget for the awareness that we are doing uh, un women Uh, UNDP, who is not present today, uh, but they have also been very instrumental in some of the work we are doing, business and human rights uh, work we are doing in developing HRIMS system. UNDP has supported us in transgender. Uh, so, um, with all all my you know very very dear stakeholders, I'd like to thank you, or and launch the 16 days of activism, and hopefully, हमारे जो media के साथ ही हैं वो भी आगे ये message. और हम आगे बढ़ाएंगे थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू मैम Now I'd like to call upon the stage the country representative of UN, UN Women Pakistan Ms Sharmila Rasool to say a few words. Honorable Minister Honorable Shreen Mazari Federal Ministry of Human Rights Honorable Secretary of the Ministry of Human Rights Rabia Jawadi Agha Honorable Secretary of the National Status of uh, Com Women's Commission um, Humaira Azam Khan His Excellency the Deputy Ambassador for the European Union members of the uh, government of pakistan representatives of the civil society media and my dear friends uh, from the united nations and un women a very good afternoon to all of you assalamu alaikum and adab i'm absolutely pleased to be here with all of you uh, today this afternoon to witness this milestone together with many of our important partners who are here in this room and two very important partners the ministry of human rights a local partner for us and our global partner the european union so absolutely delighted to be with all of you this evening dear participants of this august gathering i think if you look back in time we are in a historical moment 2020 has been a historical year for us in many ways um rabia spoke about the covid that rocked us not only us not only pakistan the whole world but apart from that we are also starting the decade of action this year 
2020 is the start of the decade of action, which means we have exactly 10 years to complete all our ambitious goals under the Sustainable De Development Goals. It's been exactly 25 years since the um, Beijing Platform for Action was adopted. It's been exactly 10 years since my organization, UN Women, was born. And today, we also launching the 16 days of activism for 2020. So indeed, a lot of milestones for 2020. These milestones tell us a story. What is that story? The story is that we have really worked hard to advance the agendas of human rights, women's rights, and trying to make our planet a better place for all of us. We have relentlessly worked hard. And we have made a lot of progress in some areas. And some areas, there needs to be more progress. So we, while we pat ourselves on our backs and say, job well done, we progress the agenda of women's rights, human rights forward, we also know that there's a lot to be done. And it's an uphill battle. We have to move forward and fast to get to achieve what we promised the whole world that we would achieve under the Sustainable Development Goals. Now, the pandemic is a huge topic. Everybody talks about it. It has, of course, a lot of negatives. It has disrupted our lifestyles, the way we think, the way we operate in our homes, our communities, in our office spaces, and globally. How we do business has basically changed. We have now to wear a permanent niqab all the time, yeah, the mask. So, but it has also created certain opportunities, time for us to think, to reflect. As Rabia mentioned, it has also created us opportunities to be innovative, which is the uh, birth of this hotline or helpline, 1099, is born because of the because of the space that the pandemic created and forced us to think differently. Now, the pandemic, at least for me, as the rep of the human, uh, UN Women Organization in Pakistan, and as a, a person, a woman from the South, for me, it has really pushed me to think differently about how we approach women's rights. Number one, it has made us realize that the, pan, the, the violence against women incidents that existed before pandemic is in fact a pandemic in itself. It's the nature, it's like the pandemic. It was so much in numbers, but nobody panicked. Nobody realized it was a pandemic. But now this pandemic has made us realize that there was a pandemic in fact, the violence against women that existed even before COVID-19 hit us. Number two, the second realization is that women who were in their homes were subjected to extreme violence during the pandemic, not just in Pakistan, all over the world. We saw this as a phenomenon. It tells us we, homes are not safe for women any longer, isn't it? They can be locked in with their perpetrator and they have to undergo violence and they're helpless. It also tell us, tells us that we have to stop telling the women to change themselves. Don't dress this way, don't go here, don't drive in the night, don't eat this, don't eat that, don't work here, don't work there. We have to stop doing that and we have to change the environment. So the realization, the second realization is we have to stop telling the women to change and instead we change the environment. If you look at the numbers, because today we launched the 16 days activism, we have to look at the numbers of violence against women. And honestly, we can't be proud about it or happy about it. Even if you look at the numbers globally or locally in Pakistan, it's not a very satisfying situation, isn't it? I ask all of you, I know I'm preaching to the converted because we've gathered here all of you who are pro-human rights uh, people who believe in human rights and women, which is why you come in to this event. Maybe I'm preaching to the converted. 
But nevertheless, I want to say this. Is this the type of world that we want to hand over to our next generation? Do we want to be the generation to hand over the earth the way it is to the next torch bearers to take forward their struggle in securing more rights for human beings? Despite the gloomy picture that I just painted, and that's reality, unfortunately, I'm really excited that there is a silver lining in the cloud. The work that the Ministry of Human Rights has done, the helpline 1099, is that silver lining, trying to work differently, trying to reach out to the survivors who need the help. If you all check your uh, mobiles now, there is an SMS that we have sent around from the UN woman. You may have received the message. It's in fact promoting this helpline plus giving the message that violence against women, 16 days activism has started. So be conscious about how you as an individual help us to promote the agenda. The app, as you all know, was greatly described by Rabia, has also a back end management, case management system. This back end case management system will help us to do two things. One is to identify what are the trends of violence that are happening? Because the calls will keep coming. So we will have a clear picture. We will understand the big picture. It will also help us not to let cases fall through cracks, so better follow up. We can get the people to report to us. But what's utmostly important is that these people receive the services, and they are not forgotten. And there is proper follow up and proper referrals. Let me also feel that I'm very pleased that the ministry has been working with us very, very closely, not just in this app. There are a long-standing partner, and UN Women enjoys a very, very strong partnership. So under the able leadership of the Honorable Minister and the Secretary, we do look forward to make sure that this app really functions, and it serves the purpose that it was launched, and the people who are there trusting the systems in Pakistan will get the services that they deserve. So that is something that we are looking forward to. I know I already asked you a question, but I'm going to conclude by leaving you with an observation and ask two questions. The observation is that women at present are impacted by two key evils. I would say the word, I would use the word evils. One is the discrimination, the other is the violence. According to CEDAW, violence is also a form of severe discrimination. So that's the observation that I leave you with. The two questions I leave you with is, if we want to change the world, if it is not now, when? If it is not you, then who? Have a lovely evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Ms. Shermanov. Ladies and gentlemen, now we'd like to screen a few films that MOHR has developed in collaboration with SOC Films and S NCSW for the 16 Days of Activism. The first film that we are going to screen today is based on rape. Rape, as you all may know, is a crime under Section 375 of the Pakistan Penal Code. The film explores the legal process and punishment for rape in Pakistan. Rape cases are to be decided within the period of three months, whereas per जनाबल जब एक ऐसा लग्स है जिसको सुनते ही खावतीन डर जाते हैं लेकिन इस बात को मध्य नजर रखते हुए कि पाकिस्तान में रोजाना कई खावतीन जनाबल जब का शिकार होते हैं हमारे लिए जनाबल जब के मुताबिक मालूमात रखना बहुत अहम है जनाबल जब को कानूनी तौर पर पाकिस्तान में तस्लीम किया जाता है जब एक शख्स किसी दूसरे शख्स के साथ ये उसकी मर्जी के खिलाफ जनाबल जब करे जैसे कि उसके मना करने के बावजूद या फिर मर्जी के साथ 
लेकिन वो मर्जी उसे डरा देता है मौत का खौफ देकर या तकलीफ पहुंचाकर नहीं देना तो बेहोशी के दौरान डरा धमका के या जिनसी और जहरी तशद करके अफसोस का अमल ये है कि ये तशद मासूम नाबालिग अफराद और छोटे बच्चों पर भी किया जाता है जिला में जागरूकता भी होता है जब दो और दो से ज्यादा लोग एक औरत के साथ जबरदस्ती करते हैं और इसको इज्तमी जिला में जब कहते हैं ये एक बहुत खिलौना जुर्म है और इसका मुकदमा अदालत इस्तेदारी दहशत गर्दी में चलाया जा रहा है चुनाचा कानून के मुताबिक वाकिया की शवाहे और फ्रेंसिक सुबूत की बुनियाद पर जिला में जब का मुकदमा चलाया जा सकता है एफ दर्ज कराने के बाद मेडिकल टेस्ट करवाए जाते हैं क्योंकि वो केस की तहकीकत में बहुत जरूरी सुबूत करता है अलबत् जुर्म करने वाले और मजदूर दोनों के लिए नए टेस्ट किए जाएंगे और जिला में जब के मुकदमा का फैसला तीन माह के अंदर अंदर सुना दिया जाएगा पर तीन छह माह के अंदर अपील करने का हक रखेंगे कानून जिला में जब के खिलाफ बहुत सख्त है इस जुर्म के इतका पर खौफ को एक या एक से ज्यादा लोग उन्हें मुकदमे की नौत के पेश नजर पच्चीस साल की कैद या फांसी की सजा सुनाई जा सकती शेयर करें और मुहिम में शामिल जिनसी की रसान आपको बताया जाता है कि यही है जो आप चाहते थे क्योंकि आपने अपने घर के गुरु पार कर लिए हैं औरत होने की हैसियत से ये आपकी जिंदगी का हिस्सा है ये तो हर जगह होता है हर औरत के साथ होता है ये कौन सी बड़ी बात है लेकिन ये है जिससे हिरासानी आपके घर में काम करने की जगह पर अवामी सवारी में और अवामी मुकाम में हो सकती है चाहे वो गैर अखलाक जुमले हो या हरकत या फिर कोई भी गैर मुनासिब रहा लेकिन यहाँ तक की इस तरह की गलती भी ताजिला के पाकिस्तान दफा पाँच सौ नौ के तहत गैर कानूनी और काबिल सजा जुर्म है इस तरह के तजर्बा झेलने के लिए जरूरी नहीं कि आप दफ्तर के अंदर मौजूद हो ये कहीं भी हो सकते हैं जहाँ आपसे और आपके साथ काम करने वालों से दफ्तर काम लिया जा रहा जिनसे नौत की पेश कदमी कबूल न करने पर सजा के तौर पर कमतर औहदे पर तनजुरी करना मुलाजमत से बरतरफ कर देना या फिर मुलाजमत में न रखना भी जिनसे हिरासानी के जुमरे में आता है और मुलाजमत की जगह पर खातन को हिरासत किए जाने के खिलाफ दफा पाँच सौ नौ के तहत इसकी सजा तीन साल या पाँच लाख रुपए जुर्माना या दोनों हो सकती है आज इन कानूनी तौर पर इस बात का जिम्मेदार है की वो उस कानून को काम करने की नुमाया जगहों पर आवेजा करे और इस बात को यकीनी बनाए की तमाम मुलाजमी इससे आगाह हो अगर वो ऐसा नहीं करता तो आप डिस्ट्रिक्ट कोर्ट के सामने गुजारिश दायर कर सकती हैं। जुर्म साबित होने पर आजिर को एक लाख रुपए जुर्माना अदा करना होगा इसके अलावा मुतासर खातून मुलाजमत की जगह पर 2010 के कानून के तहत खातन को हिरासा करने के खिलाफ शिकायत दर्ज करा सकती है इस कानून के मुताबिक आजिर की ये जिम्मेदारी है की वो जब्ता अखलाक को शामिल करते हुए इसका नफाज यकीनी बनाए और खिलाफ वर्जी की जाँच पड़ताल करने के लिए तफ्तीशी कमेटी बनाए कानून के तहत तफ्तीशी कमेटी में तीन अरकान शामिल हो और कम ऐसी कम एक औरत जरूरी हो कमेटी का मकसद है की मुलिम के खिलाफ तहकीक का आगाज करे अगर मुलिम का जुर्म साबित हो जाए तो जुर्माने के नफाज में सिफारिश करे सिफारिश को आगे मिजाज अथॉरिटी तक पहुँचाए जो फैसले पर अमल बरामद करे जुर्म साबित होने पर ये सजाएं दी जा सकती है बरामद करना तरक्की रोकना जबरी रिटायरमेंट मुलाजमत से बरतरफी मुलाजमत से बर्खास्तगी और शिकायत को नंदगान को जुर्माने की अदायगी ये दफा विफाफी और सूबाई सतह पर मुहतजा भी फराहम करती है जो की मुतासर फरीब की जानब ऐसी दायर की गई दरख्वास्त सुनता है कानून होने के बावजूद भी अगर दफ्तर इंतजामिया आपकी हिरासानी की शिकायत को संजीदगी से ना ले तो आपको चाहिए कि आपकी शिकायत अपने मुकामी जिले के मुहतसर के दफ्तर में जमा कराए मजदूर अगर मुहतसर के फैसले से मुतमिन ना हो तो वो सदर या गवर्नर को भी दरख्वास्त दे सकता है इस वीडियो को शेयर करें और मुहिम में शामिल
Honorable Minister, Honorable Secretary, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, friends, I'm very glad, very, very glad to be here this afternoon and already now deeply impressed by your speech and your speech, your intervention, but also by the, by the films that we have seen. Um, and therefore, it is a honor for me to be here at the launch of the 1099 helpline and the 60 days of activism campaigns against uh, gender-based violence. And the day has been well chosen. It's today the International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women. Along our common projects presented today, and again, the European Union is very proud to have been able to co-fund and to co-finance these projects, I wish to talk briefly about three main topics human rights and women rights and gender equality in general, then gender-based violence, and last but not least, a subject that has not yet been mentioned, um, gender equality as an economic component, to go a bit broader on our analysis. Firstly, promoting women's rights and gender equality is for the European Union an essential part of our policy. The Council of European Union only a few days ago adopted a so-called action plan on the human rights and democracy 2020 to 2024. Now you may say, yeah, the European Union likes very much action plans and documents, but this is also an, an action plan that has been adopted by the 27 member states because we know that also in the European Union not everything is perfect. We also have to work internally on all these issues. But at the same time, we like cooperating with third countries. And this action plan gives also um, points how we can do this cooperation with third countries. Let me tell you that women's rights and gender equality have a very prominent place in this action plan. And another link I would also like to make, very actual, very current, you know that yesterday there was the donors conference for Afghanistan. The high representative of the European Union for foreign policy made a long speech there in which he clearly said that he wishes that women's rights, and he mentioned this explicitly, will be approached, will be discussed and will be addressed in the further pre-peace process in Afghanistan. It's a very important neighbor of your, of your country. It's in all the headlines currently and I think this mentioning is very, very important also to do today. Yeah, let's, let's come back to Pakistan. The launch of uh, the first human rights information resource portal, we have just seen it, um, has been developed in partnership with us. Again, we are very proud, we are very glad about this. Um, and that's just an example of the cooperation with you, the government of Pakistan, in and the efforts to promote human rights, in particular women's rights and gender equality. Secondly, gender-based violence. Let me start with a personal remark. Some 10 years ago, I used to work on Bosnia and Herzegovina. I was there very often. I had discussions with politicians, with many people, but I had also talks quite discreetly with women and with men, but with the women who were the object, the subject of gender-based violence during the war. If you have ever had any fantasy what gender-based violence could be, you would lose any fantasy after these discussions and after these stories. And I said, I also discussed with men, because some of them were forced to observe what was happening. So um, I know a little bit what gender-based violence means and what it can mean um, only based on this experience. Uh, as it was already said, uh, gender-based violence in our recent months has been an issue under influence of COVID-19. And Secretary, nobody could better explain this as you have done it, so I spare, <laughs> I spare any more words on this. Um, uh, and, and the fact is really, as you also said, these crimes, they are crimes. These crimes are often unreported. They remain under impunity. 
There is silence, it was shown. There is stigma and there is shame surrounding it. I am therefore glad that we as EU support the Ministry of Human uh, Rights and, and UN Women um, in the project of the helpline, as it has been nicely explained before. Women can get in direct contact with the necessary competent authorities. Um, they may get and can ask for assistance and information on referral mechanisms. We hope that this helps women and even girls uh, to leave shame behind and to report about violent acts against themselves. While gender-based violence affects mostly women and girls, it has also an impact on men and boys. Let's not forget this. Abuses take place in homes, in schools, in universities, in workplaces. However, we think, and that's our common fight, gender-based violence is preventable. The most important tool in our, aware, in our thinking is awareness rising, is creating understanding for the societal root causes of this form of violence. And I think we have to start very at the bottom, I mean with education, with educational institutions. They can, they can and they must play a crucial role in reducing and ending, ending gender-based violence. And in that sense, uh, it is not only to educate girls, it is also to educate boys. And by education, let me clearly say this, I do not only mean the official institutions, schools, universities, workplaces, it is also education at home. The last part, gender equality as a critical economic component. I go away from the current presentations, but um, I think it is for me very important to also broaden a little bit uh, this, this point of the discussion. We have heard often women are discriminated in their social life. Um, discrimination takes place in professional environment, in, in during the leisure time, wherever it can, it can be the case. This has often to do with a lack of opportunities difficult access to education and health, and under-representation in politics and decision-making processes. The European Union also wants to foster this element of the discussion and to make clear that this is one way of promoting gender equality, of promoting women's rights. So it is therefore also, in our view, a critical economic component in whatever country. And we know that there are countries where women's rights are respected, even though not at 100%, have a stronger growth. They are more productive, more prosperous. Some countries, however, neglect this talent and productivity of half of its population. Let me come back, Secretary, what you said about COVID. We know and we were lucky and happy to co-fund and finance a project in Sindh where women who were textile producers very quickly and very flexibly changed their work, changed their work and produced masks. So not only they, not only they used their talent to, to, to continue working to generate revenue, the masks actually protected their men. This is an, is an example that was for me extremely, extremely telling and uh, is something that uh, should not be forgotten. So, concluding, uh, we as EU, we are ready to support even more activities and to invest more funds in Pakistan to help women to become entrepreneurs and to gain economic empowerment and leadership. We are currently working on our next seven years framework of funding and financing, and we do this together with the Pakistani government. Uh, we have already some key elements of our programming, and I can tell you, Women's rights are a mainstreaming, a cross-cutting issue in what we are currently discussing with the government. So that we have a broader picture, uh, but I want to conclude by saying that this broader picture should not minimize the relevance of these three projects, uh, which I wish plenty of success and a huge public uh, echo. Thank you very much. Rahim, Shridhar Rasool, UN Women here. 
Thomas C. C. Zyla from the EU, Rabia Javeri, our very able secretary, who unfortunately is going to be leaving us soon. And that's very traumatic for us, some of us. But anyhow, ladies and gentlemen, today we're beginning 16 days of activism in terms of gender violence and women's rights. And of course, today, as was pointed out, it's the International Day for Elimination of Violence Against Women. Pakistan is not new to this issue. Hamare bhot se masle masail hain. Lekin, hamari hukumat na sirf taslim karti hai in maslo ko, lekin aage badi hai ke some or the other ye masle masail khatam kiye jayen. Jo khawateen aur bachon ke saath tashadud hota hai, jo jinsi tashadud hai, jo harassment hai, ye sari khatam honi chahiye. Kavaneen bhot se bane hai. Hamara issue awareness hai, or implementation of Kavaneen. But there are also gaps. And I will tell you that yesterday there was a controversy in our media. Some old leaked uh, document that people have said that this government has passed and has passed consent of age 13 years. The Anti-Rape Ordinance and the PPC Amendment Ordinance was wrong. अभी वो कैबिनेट अप्रूव्ड इन प्रिंसिपल ये दोनों ऑर्डिनेंसेस आज उसको फाइनल शेप मिला है और कंसेंट 16 साल पे ही है 13 साल कोई नहीं है तो मैं मीडिया को ये रिक्वेस्ट करूंगी कि ये क्लेरिफिकेशन बहुत लाज़मी है ऑर्डिनेंस फाइनलाइज हो गया है बट एस यू नो देर आर प्रोसेसेस थ्रू विच इट हैज टू गो अब वो कैबिनेट की पहले इन प्रिंसिपल थी अप्रूवल अब probably by circulation bhi ho jayegi, ordinance ki approval aayegi, the president will sign and then it will become law. Or it's a matter of two days, three days maximum. So inshallah, humara ye bhoat strong aur bhoat ek commitment thi, humari hukumat ki aur khas taur pe prime minister ki, ki ye jo rape ho raha hai, bachon ke saath, khawateen ke saath, isko ek holistic stand-alone kanun via media se hum isko khatam karein aur joh humara ye ordinances dono aare hai is mein saza sakht hai time frames hai rape crisis cells banenge aur ye har district ya jidhar district pe nahi ban sakte divisional level pe banenge aur ye kya kehte जो का ऑर्डिनेंस आ रहे हैं क्योंकि इट्स क्रिमिनल लॉ इट इज एप्लीकेबल ऑल ओवर पाकिस्तान ये सिर्फ इस्लामाबाद टेरिटरी में नहीं होगा ये पूरे पाकिस्तान में लागू किया जाएगा और इसमें जो बहुत सी चीजें नहीं थी हमारे कवानीन में जैसे विक्टिम प्रोटेक्शन विमेन पुलिस ऑफिसर्स विमेन मेडिकल लीगो ऑफिसर्स जो है ये सारा कुछ इसमें आ रहा है, so it's going to be a strong law, a standalone law, and इसकी implementation क्योंकि federal government की commitment है, इसकी implementation strictly होगी, और इसके अंदर सजाएं जो हैं, वो भी सख्त किस्म की होंगी, और rape की जो definition है, उसको पहली दफा ना सिर्फ expand किया गया है but there is also a gang rape definition and 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 there is also a gang rape definition we have done those amendments so that the punishments also become severe and inshallah once this law comes into place I think it will make a big difference besides that we have laws to pray on protection of women we also uh, are going to make special courts just for rape and all uh, active uh, sort of uh, crimes that are linked with rape and that would include pornography that incites rape that will include harassment which leads to violence and rape so these are things that are now going to come under the very wide and more inclusive definition of rape which was not 
और इसके अलावा हमारे ऑलरेडी जेंडर बेस्ड कोर्ट्स हैं दोज विल रिमेन एज दे आर बट दीज स्पेशल कोर्ट्स विल डील फोकस ओनली विद द क्राइम ऑफ रेप इन चिल्ड्रन एंड वेमेन वी ऑल्सो ऑफकोर्स विल फॉलो अप विद अवेयरनेस प्रोग्राम्स बिकॉज वन ऑफ द प्रॉब्लम दैट वी हैव इज जिधर कानून है उधर औरतों खातन को और बच्चों को खास तौर पर पता ही नहीं है इस कानून का अवेयरनेस नहीं है सो अलोंग साइड द लॉ एंड इट्स इम्प्लीमेंटेशन इट्स असेंशल दैट वी हैव अवेयरनेस सो वेमेन नो फॉर एग्जाम्पल देर राइट्स whether it's right to inheritance whether it's a right to uh, take uh, file a case against harassment against physical violence mental torture whether it's children who are abused and don't know what to do we are running special awareness programs in all the areas around islamabad already our teams are going out and we have our films which we have shown on television and we are now trying to get support the corporate social responsibility from the corporate sector so that we are able to increase the uh, showing of these films especially on prime time television channels because we strongly believe that awareness is as important as the law itself the, or the other thing is we talk about violence we talk about laws एक चीज जिसमें हम बात नहीं करते कि जब जुर्म हो जाता है उस वक्त कानून हरकत में आता है लेकिन हम जो चाहते हैं कि लोगों की सोच और जहनीत बदलें ताकि वो क्राइम कमिट ना हो वी हैव टू चेंज पीपल्स थिंकिंग टू मेक श्योर दैट द क्राइम इज नॉट कमिटेड इन द फर्स्ट प्लेस वी हैव टू टेल पेरेंट्स टीचर्स दैट सेक्शुअल अब्यूज इज नॉट एक्सेप्टेबल and what are the signs they should watch out for so these are all the things that we are doing and uh, rabia of course explained a lot of things in detail i don't want to get into that but i think hamari ye jo 1099 ki ek uh, app hai for gender based violence isse bhi bahut farak padega kyunki there are women who can't make a call and speak when they have the harasser sitting in the home with them or sitting in the office with them so the silent help call will help give, will give them that opportunity and that uh, sort of right to be able to register their complaint and immediately help will be coming isse pehle we had already launched our zara app on the prime minister's portal and that is a very effective app because now any citizen even if they see somebody whom they think is uh, about to abuse a child can just get on to that uh, the prime minister's portal there will be a icon for zara alert and they will be able to register a complaint they don't have to wait ke police ke thane jaye udhar fir katwaye ye karne ki zarurat nahi hai the moment they register the complaint on the app because all over pakistan and is uh, in ajk and gilgit baltistan sare dpos ke offices mein there are now dashboards where immediately the Uh, crime will be reported and they will have to come into action because if there is any delay by the police in taking action they will be held responsible and punished by the prime minister's office itself so that is the app that we had already launched and again i want to say ke is ye jo hamare do qawaneen aa rahe hain ordinances isme bhi police ke liye saza hai agar wo follow up sahi nahi karte अगर कोई शख्स आइडेंटिटी रिवील करता है विक्टिम की उसके लिए भी पनिशमेंट है सो वी आर इंश्योरिंग प्रोटेक्शन ऑफ द विक्टिम विटनेस प्रोटेक्शन प्लस पनिशमेंट फॉर दोज हु डोंट ऑब्जर्व द लॉ और हु डिले डिलिबरेटली द परस्यूइंग ऑफ द केस स्पेशली इफ इट्स द पुलिस और द अथॉरिटीज दैट हैव टू टेक द केस फर्दर 16 days of activism hamari is focusing primarily on awareness because we feel awareness is what is lacking and we have to spread that across pakistan so this is how we are going and that is why we are going to show our films online repeatedly so that they reach all parts of the country and there is an awareness you just saw two of them but there are a number of other films kaise fir register karni hai nikah nama mein 
کون سی چیزیں ہیں جس کو آپ نے کیفلی سٹیڈی کرنا ہے انکلوڈنگ رائٹ آف ڈیوس یہ ساری چیزیں ہماری اویئرنیس پروگرامز میں اب کی جائیں گی آلسو آف کورس جو ہمیں سمجھتی ہوں بہت ضروری ہے بیکاز پاکستان میں دیر از نو سنگل پورٹل جدھر سے آپ کو انفارمیشن مل سکے انسانی حقوق کے بارے میں ہم نے یہ پورٹل جو ریسورس پورٹل بنایا ہے تھینکس ٹو دا پارٹنرز دا یورپین یونین اس میں آپ کو ایک تو آپ کی آئین کی شکیں ملیں گی پورا آئین ملے گا اس کے اندر انٹرنیشنل کنونشنز جو پاکستان نے سائن کیے ہیں ہیومن رائٹس کی وہ آپ کو ملیں گی یو این کے جو کنونشنز ہیں ہیومن رائٹس کے وہ آپ کو ملیں گے آپ کو ہماری یو این کی رپورٹس جو ہم نے سبمٹ کیے ہیں کنونشنز کے اوپر پروگریس آن واٹ وی ہیو ڈن وہ سارا ادھر ملے گا نیشنل ایکشن پلان ہمارا آپ کو ادھر ملے گا آپ کو ہماری جو پبلیکیشنز ہیں جیسے پرزن ریفارم پہ ہے ویمن پرزنرز پہ ہے اب ہماری ایک اور پبلیکیشن آ رہی ہے کووڈ کے حوالے سے کہ کس طرح ہم نے وہ پرائم منسٹر کے وہ جو یو این سیکٹری جنرل کے آٹھ ایٹ باسکٹس تھیں کہ کووڈ میں کیا کرنا چاہیے آپ کو تاکہ ان لوگوں کے انسانی حقوق اور تشدد نہ ہو اور انسانی حقوق آگے لے کے چلیں اس کے مطابق ہماری ایک بکلیٹ آ رہی ہے کہ کیا ہوا اور کیا ہونا چاہیے تو یہ ساری چیزیں آپ کو ایک پورٹل پہ ساری انفارمیشن ملے گی بیکاز گیٹنگ انفارمیشن از ایکسٹریملی امپورٹنٹ چاہے میڈیا ہو چاہے اسٹوڈنٹس ہوں چاہے وکلا ہوں سب کو اس ریڈیلی اویلیبل سورس آف انفارمیشن جب مل جائے گی تو میں سمجھتی ہوں اس سے بہتر ہمارے لوگ سمجھ سکیں گے نہ صرف انسانی حقوق لیکن پاکستان کس طرح آگے بڑھتا جا رہا ہے بیکاز وی ہیو گڈ اسٹوریز ٹو ٹیل ہمارا ٹرانس جینڈر لا از ون آف دا موسٹ پروگریسو ان دا ورلڈ وی ہیو آن ڈسبلٹیز وی آر فار اے ہیڈ آف مینی ادر کنٹریز سو ہم کئی چیزوں پہ بہت آگے جا رہے ہیں ہمارے چائلڈ ابیوز کے پروگرامز اویئرنیس پروگرامز آر گوئنگ فارورڈ سو وی وی آر ناٹ سینگ کہ وی آر پرفیکٹ بٹ ہم بہت کام کر چکے ہیں اور بہت کام کر رہے ہیں اینڈ اٹس امپورٹنٹ کہ ہم انفارم کریں اپنی قوم کو کہ اور ہم اپنی قوم کو یہ بھی بتائیں کہ آپ کو اگر کوئی انسانی حقوق کا کی شکایت ہے یا مسئلہ ہے تو کیسے آپ جلد از جلد یہ رپورٹ کر سکتے ہیں اور ہم اس کا رسپانس بھی اتنی جلدی دیں گے کئی کیسز تو مجھے خود آتے ہیں آن مائی واٹس ایپ ان دا منسٹرز آفس وی ڈیل ود دم ویدر اٹس ان دا پروونسز ویدر اٹس ایٹ دا سینٹر وی آر کوائی ایبل ٹو ڈیل ود دم کوائٹ افیکٹولی کیونکہ ہماری منسٹری کی ٹیم از ایکسٹریملی ٹیونڈ ان ٹو دس اینڈ کمیٹڈ ٹو فردرنگ ہیومن رائٹس سو پورٹل از ویری امپورٹنٹ اینڈ آئی ڈونٹ وانٹ ٹو سی مچ مور کیونکہ کافی وقت پہلے ہو گیا اینڈ آئی نو دیٹ یو این ویمن ایٹ لیسٹ از سپوز ٹو بی ایٹ این ادر فنکشن ایز ویل وچ از آلریڈی بین ڈیلیٹ سوری فار دیٹ وی اسٹارٹیڈ لیٹ بٹ آئی ڈو وانٹ ٹو تھینک آر پارٹنرس یو این ویمن دا یورپین یونین اینڈ آف کورس نمبر آف ادر یو این ایجنسیز آلسو ہو آر ناٹ پرزنٹ ٹو ڈے بٹ ہو ہیو ورک very well with us and very effectively UNDP has been one of those organizations UNICEF is another one so we have and of course we are members of the UN so we expect uh, the UN organizations to work with our ministry as they do with many other ministries so once again I want to thank everybody بہت بہت شکریہ آپ کا اور انشاءاللہ ہماری جو کمٹمنٹ ہے انسانی حقوق کے بارے میں وہ ہم آگے لے کے بڑھیں گے کیونکہ ہماری منسٹری کا سلوگن یہ ہے کہ سوشل ویلفیئر اپنی جگہ ہے ہم بات کرتے ہیں حقوق کی دا آر اپروچ از اے رائٹس بیسڈ اپروچ ایوری سٹیزن ہیز دا رائٹ ٹو ڈیمانڈ دا ہیومن رائٹس ان شائنڈ ان آ کانسٹیٹیوشن ہر شخص کا یہ حق ہے کسی پہ ہمارے کوئی شہری احسان نہیں کرتا حکومت پہ جب وہ حق اپنے مانگتا ہے یہ ہمارا فرض ہے ایز اے گورنمنٹ کہ ہم انسانی حقوق جو ہم نے ہماری آئین میں ہیں وہ ہم لوگوں تک پہنچائیں بہت بہت شکریہ تھینک یو